This illustration deals with protection of ground clamps and fittings in accordance with NEC 250.10. Now notice uh, we're illustrating a driven rod and means of providing uh, protection so that that uh, clamp is not damaged in some way and we lose connection of the grounding electrode conductor where it terminates to the driven rod. Now many times uh, people want to know how, it, where on the code does uh, it address a driven rod. Well, it, let's look at the driven rod. First of all, 250.52A5 says a rod has to be eight foot in length, a uh, half inch in diameter, and eight foot of it in the earth. So to be above the earth as you see there, it would have to be, you know, like a 10 foot rod or a rod that would uh, be long enough to give you eight foot in the earth. And that's 250.52A5. 250.53A and 250.53G talks about uh, it being a supplement to the water pipe if the metal water pipe happens to be an electrode uh, uh, as classified in 250.52A1 then we could supplement. Uh, we could also uh, use it uh, at a piece of equipment outside, a driven rod for, uh, to divert surges, uh, protect from lightning protection and divert those type of surges. And then 250.53A2 exception says a driven rod has to have a 25 ohm or less resistant measurement except as in 250.53G, where it's a supplementary uh, type electrode, an auxiliary type electrode that you're using for equal potential planes around equipment uh, for, uh, to uh, uh, divert lightning surges uh, and surges coming down the line for any reason. Now, to make sure that this driven rod provides any one of all those bullets that you see that we just discussed, 250.10 says that uh, termination has to be protected. So one way that they do it out in the oil patch at times is they'll drive down an oversized metal conduit or Schedule 80 uh, IMC, and they'll cut it kind of at an angle, and they'll drive it down, drill holes in the side, uh, and then the electrician can look uh, uh, into that pipe and see the connection that it's made that uh, he at least knows it's connected good, see. Uh, but again, if you're going to leave the rod above grade, you're supposed to get a longer rod. So this is something that you really uh, need to look at because the installation rules of that driven rod is in 250.53G, just exactly how the electrician has to make the installation. So keep that in mind. Uh, and if you do not use the system as you see, then you would need to have a protective covering that they design that you buy, you know, usually from the uh, supply house. Uh, it's a metal uh, enclosure, uh, a type enclosure that uh, if it's of wood, it's treated uh, and has to be naturally uh, maintenance pulled on it and make sure that it's in good uh, condition or equivalent protection. And usually, if you're going to do this and use wood or other equipment protection, check with the authority having jurisdiction and make sure 90.4 doesn't become a, a problem to you. So uh, this figure 16-13 strictly deals with protection of ground clamps and fittings in accordance with 250.10. Uh, then I recommend uh, that you, uh, to get the overall picture here, is to review 250.8, 250.10, and 250.12 as you see in the uh, called out sections uh, right above the illustration to your right. So uh, th this is what figure 16-13 is illustrating.